In the previous section, we looked at the process of configuring and managing the content library. In this section, we're going to take a look at upgrading to vSphere 6.5 deployment essentials. We're going to look at upgrading to vSphere 6.5 deployment essentials. In this video, we're going to take a look at an overview of the vSphere upgrade process. And we have to do this because in a short time that we have for this video, we can't possibly look at every possibility here, but an overview would be useful. We will then look at the essentials of deployment topologies, some of the key features that we need to keep in mind, some uh, vCenter server considerations, and uh, ESXi host upgrade considerations. So we will first look at the vSphere upgrade process overview. Depending on the existing environment, there are many available options. And the best way to go about it is to review the latest version of VMware vSphere 6.5 upgrade guides. They give you a step-by-step -step procedure depending on what your current environment is. And based on that, you can understand your upgrade options. Many folks uh, want to take a staged upgrade. For, so they go from vSphere 5.5 to 6.0 to 6.5. Although it is possible to move directly from vSphere 5.5 to vSphere 6.5. So it's good to understand the upgrade options. Different options are available and I'm sure some option will meet your circumstances. The uh, configuration details are very important. Again, the guides have all the information that you need and you must look at that. Depending on the upgrade option that you choose, you will have a different sequence of uh, tasks. We're going to review some deployment models uh, as well because of vCenter and the overall topology. There are some deprecated changes and some recommended changes. We'll take a look at that and the pros and cons of that as well. Oh, and of course, you have to make a decision whether you're going to move to the vCenter server appliance or stick with vCenter for uh, Windows. And of course, uh, a web client is uh, mandatory if you're moving from uh, vSphere 5.5. A key aspect to consider is the deployment topologies. So really the key to it is to understand that the embedded platform services controller with the PSC and the vCenter server were all embedded in one bundle. That topology has been deprecated. So you must, in the end, in your final configuration, you must implement an external PSC in some suitable configuration. Now there are many options available and we'll just go through three of these uh, to give you an idea of the pros and cons of the various deployment topologies. So if you have a single SSO domain, a single site, and you put the PSC and the vCenter on the same host, remember, we are not talking embedded PSC now, we're talking about an external PSC, but still, the PSC and the vCenter are running on the same host. So basically, you have no enhanced uh, link mode possible for vCenter, and PSC replication is obviously unsupported. So to move to a more sophisticated model, where we have a single SSO domain, a single site, but two or more PSCs, what will happen now is that PSC failure will require you to manually point to the working PSC, because there's nothing in between that tells us otherwise. And of course, if one of the two PSCs is working on a higher latency server, then moving to that PSC will cause overall performance degradation. You then have the more sophisticated and probably the best option that we have now. It utilizes the vCenter server appliance high availability capability that's now possible with vSphere 6.5. And this is a single SSO, single site, more than two external PSCs, but in between the vCenters and the platform service controllers, you have load balancers in between. So that uh, the load balancer would uh, point to a working uh, PSC when an existing PSC uh, fails. And that is probably the best way to configure your topology. But again, work with uh, VMware. You have a basic idea of these options. But then, of course, the details would differ based on your circumstances. vServer considerations. We've just covered the fact that we need to understand the deprecated topology, which is of an embedded platform services controller. In the end, we should implement an external PSC in a suitable configuration. A big question, of course, is the vCenter Server Appliance or vCenter Windows. VMware has implemented the vCenter Server Appliance with some excellent capabilities, such as the vSphere Update Manager, the WAM, as well as Auto Deploy and other capabilities directly embedded in it, including, of course, the vCenter Server Appliance high availability option that allows you to have an active, passive, and uh, witness configurations or instances rather of uh, vCenter servers so that you have a high availability configuration in place. Now, of course, if you are very familiar with Windows or for other reasons you want to stay with vCenter Windows, then of course you have multiple environments to uh, maintain, but possibly that for your circumstances may be the right decision. Now, if you're on vSphere 5.5, the migration path, you can migrate 
directly, but there are a lot of pitfalls in between. Now, technically, you could just go from vSphere 5.5 to 6.5, obviously working initially with the vCenter server and so on, because there is no environment out there that is pristine in the sense that there is no pristine vSphere 5.5 environment. There are always other add-ons and so on. That path is usually not possible. So you have some work cut out to work with VMware when you decide to migrate a working data center with uh, multiple other applications in the environment to move over to vSphere 6.5. Of course, the classic client is uh, deprecated. The vSphere web client has uh, excellent capabilities. And in order to use the vSphere web client, one needs the Adobe Flash Player version 16 or later. ESXi host upgrades. So after the vCenter server and the vSphere update manager are upgraded, the ESXi host can be upgraded including directly from 5.5 or 6.0 to version ESXi 6.5. And of course, in a clean configuration, this is very simple, but usually working data centers don't really always have clean configurations. Some of the options you have to do an ESXi host upgrade, and of course, I'm not recommending most of these. You can use the interactive GUI installer. Well, that's an option if you have only one or two ESXi hosts to manage, but anything beyond that becomes very scary. A scripted upgrade. So yes, you can have uh, scripts in place, uh, but uh, once again, why take the trouble to write the script and to debug it and maintain it and so on when there are better options available. There is, of course, the ESX CLI interface. I'm not sure if anyone would use it except in the most difficult circumstances. If your ESXi version 5.5 was auto-deployed, you can use the vSphere auto deploy option to upgrade you to version uh, 6.5 using host profiles and the standard auto deploy methodology. And of course, the one that is recommended is to use the vSphere update manager, which is available directly integrated with the vSphere server appliance version 6.5. So overall, there are many things to look at. It's just that once you are at version 6.5, then the integrated capability of the vCenter server appliance version 6.5 of with the auto deploy and the update manager and the high availability options will make your life a lot simpler when in the future you probably are going to upgrade to ESXi version 7.